again, from watching that, I don't see how anybody could survive something like that. But, you know, the lesson in this Exhibit A as to why you don't run from the police, just don't do it. It is just not worth it. And uh, this individual here may ha well have paid the ultimate price for trying to run, as he did, as we've been saying, over 100 miles an hour on that 10 eastbound. Tim, uh, so it, it looks at this point from, from what you can see that this is the only car that was involved, nothing else serious, at least. Well, I, yeah, that's exactly what I saw. I just all of a sudden saw him go out of control as I was looking up for the uh, LAPD helicopters overhead. And then I saw that second car go through the flames. But yeah, if he survives this, he owes his life to the LAPD for going up there and pulling him out. And uh, he could have very well flipped that car. But going through this interchange here, it's very tight. And at that speed, it's not designed for that kind of speed. And it doesn't take much for you to lose control and go uh, you know, around in circles, and that's what, kind of what happened. But uh, it, he could have possibly clipped that one car that went by him trying to get around, but he definitely lost control of that vehicle and hit that right side wall at a very high rate of speed, and of course going over on his roof. And uh, you can know, tell, you know, these cars, you know, they just don't normally explode like this when they crash. They're, uh, they're, uh, they're built to not do this, but he must have very had a very high velocity into that uh, into that wall and then the rollover go oh, boom you see right there there's probably a tire going off as it burns it just burns to the ground I'm looking back i see the fire department now is pushing its way through stop traffic trying to get up here to it but uh yeah they're just barely letting cars by uh they're pushing them over to the five freeways what they're doing uh getting them through there but it was uh, quite a crash here like what like i said he owes his life to lapd if uh if he survived that initial impact. Boy, and what a scene that was. I mean, uh, to see the, the officers go in, uh, knowing that, that they're chasing, they don't know what what they're going to expect, you know, and go in to try and, and, and pull the man out. Whether he survived or not is still a question, but what a scene that was to see. Yeah. And then them trying to put out the flames, that clearly that's still going. Well, there was just a brief moment where that car, where that car wasn't engulfed in flames. I mean, you saw the initial explosion, and when these officers approached the car, it was out enough for them to be able to pull this guy out of the car. Tim, did they have fire extinguishers with them, or, or was it just a, a, a brief lull in the flame? No, it was just basically the engine compartment was on fire, parts of the uh, interior, if we go back and look, and I could see the driver door uh, there that the fire wasn't quite onto the driver's part of the car yet, but the LA officers just made their approach uh, uh, as they normally do, and just, you know, once they realized that he wasn't in a way of uh, harming them, then they put their uh, lives at risk going in to get him out before this thing went up in flames. But it wasn't more than about 30 seconds after they drug him away that this thing was fully engulfed. And the fire truck is just now pushing its way up through. I got you over there, Levin. And it was pushing his way through the traffic. But you can see right there, they're still working on him on the right shoulder uh, just the, to the east of where the crash is and like I said they had a one car that stopped down the street uh, down the freeway from them and uh, I don't know if that was a car they possibly clipped or not but yeah this car is going to burn to the ground before the uh, that fire truck could get through all the uh, traffic and then the uh, also the police cars that are stopped behind this anyway so it uh, man what a mess here I'm trying to get a little bit closer here so I can try to maybe see with them working on that uh, the driver on the shoulder, but, uh, and uh, the, from what the, my camera and Tim Deckard just told me, they have him propped up, so that's a that's a good sign that he's okay. still wow. still with us and that they uh, saved his life. So we're gonna try to get a better look at it uh, if we can here with LAPD. Slide his light over to it, we will get that look, but. Uh, Isn't that a right twist now, to iron The cops he's running from end up saving his life. I mean, if he's sitting upright, clearly he's <laughs> conscious. And what a miracle yeah, exactly. that would be. I mean, when you look at the, how that car went down in flames, what a miracle that would be. Incredible. Well, you see him right there. They've got their lights on him. He is moving. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and you know, being a, having been a police officer myself for 30 years, you know, you could be chasing the worst guy in the world, but once it turns into a thing where you have to save his life, it doesn't matter what he did or what he'd been doing. You, you need to kick into the life-saving mode. And that's what exactly what these officers did, exactly what they're trained to do. And not just stand back and you know, wait for the fire department to show up, but they want to put themselves in harm's way to get him out, even though he was being the knucklehead racing away from them yeah. and was the main cause of why this crash happened. But uh, that's what police officers have to do. It's what you're trained to do. And sometimes you got to really uh, hang it out there to save some guy 
who sometimes if if you look at it isn't really worth saving if you you know do it but you can't put that quantity on a man on a human life no matter what they've done so mm -hmm. there you see the fire department knocking the flames down on that car but it is really a mess but uh, <laughs> so this is going to shut down this interchange for quite a while it's going to affect the five freeway as well as the 60 because uh, it's right over the top just past the gore point for the split between the five and the 60. imagine the story that guy has in the car behind him <laughs> Let's take a look at some of that traffic as well, because the backup looks like it's going to be pretty bad. Uh, oh, yeah, and for some time, yeah. you can imagine. I mean, this is going to go all the way yeah. back through downtown into the Silver Lake area before long here. I mean, not a heavy flow at this time of night, but but it doesn't take much. And, and there you see the backup now right in through downtown, and it will continue. They're not going to have this thing cleaned up anytime soon. Uh, it looks like a sports car, Tim. Did you ever get a read on what kind of car that was? It was. It was a red red. A red Mustang stamp, a semi with their a TV, or police 18 TV5, that's affirmative. And then uh, yeah, it was a red Mustang, high rate of speed, that what they put it out as single driver. So yeah, it was it was a, a sports car, and it was unbelievable how fast he was going. So yeah, it uh, it's the first crash I've ever seen like this, where you get that much fire and that much uh, that much uh, you know crash at the end, and then to get the officers to save the guy. Well, and just that the fact that he's uh, that he's propped up and that he was moving, that we saw him there on the side, that he survived uh, this crash, that the um, police officers that were chasing him came to the rescue um, and made that decision quite quite fast uh, when the car was on in flames. Is this is such an incredible police pursuit? Uh, something I, I don't think I've ever seen before. No, you, I mean, you, I can't recall seeing anything like this on Los Angeles television or anywhere around the country for that matter, and this is going to be on every national Track newscast you. tomorrow. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. If you're just joining us, a remarkable and extraordinary explosion at the end of this highest of high-speed pursuits, high. a DUI suspect who jumped on the freeway near Crenshaw in the 10 eastbound at speeds upwards of 110 miles an hour, Tim Lynn and Sky 5 telling us it was a red Mustang that police were chasing again a DUI suspect made his way through downtown Los Angeles and as he was getting into that East LA interchange area hard to determine at this point in the dark whether he was trying to take the 5 south the 10 east or perhaps the 60 east but he somehow lost control unclear if he clipped the rear bumper of a car in front of him or if he just got a little squirrely as they say in that car not used to driving at that high rate of speed in a very narrow passage he lost control and spun to the point where his car exploded and how the officers were able to pull him out before that car was fully engulfed in flames and to know at this point that he's sitting upright upright on the side of the freeway alive. Certainly is an incredible story. Uh, of course, we're going to keep on following this. Tim Lynn and Sky 5 will continue with those pictures as well. And you can get updates on KTLA.com as well as the morning news, which starts at 4 a.m. Thank you so much for joining us here for the KTLA 5 News at 10. Sports Final with Darren Horton is coming up next.